Well, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. This is Angie Marie, and I'm so excited that you tuned in. If this is the first time that you're visiting this channel, thank you so much for tuning in. And if this, if you are returning to this, if you have seen other videos before, you are super welcome. Today we want to talk about something very interesting. But before we do that, I just want to wish everyone a very happy new year. We're all so excited to be alive in this new decade of the 2020s. A lot of us had some serious challenges in the previous decade. Some were looking forward to the start, to a new start in 2020. So happy new year and happy new decade to all of us. Welcome. All right. So today I just want to move straight into the topic that I want to talk about and, you know, for us to discuss really. And that is the three most important matters to consider when you relocate overseas. And I'm talking specifically, however, about re relocating or migrating to the United States of America. And I should also qualify this by saying, you know, I'm referring mostly to immigrants who move from the Caribbean, from Africa and from, from Latin America to the north and in particular to, to the united states because that is what i know about now before i tell you the three what i consider to be the three most important things i want to throw out some statistics that i read that i saw recently and here are some of these statistics here are some truths um the in terms of the working age population of the united states uh, since 2019, September 2019, it has been said that there are more than 200 million people who are within the working age and the working working age is considered to be over 15. Now, sometimes they say between 15 and 64, but when you live in the US, you realize that there are people here who work up to the age of 80 and even 90. Of course, it depends on how strong they are. So we're looking at people who are over the age of 15 and able to work. And the statistics say that that's more than 200 million. Um, half of those people are already working. So what I would say is this, if, if you are a new immigrant or someone who is considering moving to the United States, you need to consider this fact that you are really competing with hundreds, a couple hundreds of millions of persons. And even if it is, let's say 50%, that's still quite a chunk of people. I am from a country that has a population of less than 3 million people. So if you say someone who is uh, from the Caribbean or from Jamaica, who is moving to the United States to do, intending to work there, you know, and you're between a particular age group that's of working age, consider this, that you're competing with several millions of other people. And the thing is, you're competing with people who are already United States citizens, people who are also qualified, people who have experience and who have lived in the country. So they may know a lot more than you. So I said that to say this. Why am I saying that? Now, very often people relocate overseas, people who are very qualified, had very good jobs. Let's say you worked in an office, an air conditioned office, and you had great benefits. And you assume that when you move to the United States, it's going to be a similar experience. Now, I'm sharing these statistics with you so that you consider that, no, the experience will not necessarily be the same. OK, because the United States and clearly will, will consider their own citizens first for the best jobs. So if you are highly qualified, let's say in education or healthcare, or maybe, you know, as in administration, banking or whatever it is, you and you relocate, you're relocating uh, not at the same level or you're not on par with a United States citizen who has was born in the US or who has lived in the US for many year, years, who has had US experience, qualification and so on. So we need to consider that. Okay, so what does it mean? 
it means that the person persons who migrate for the first time um, may end up finding themselves doing jobs that the typical US citizen does not want to do. So you may find yourself having to do in the, in the interim while you get your training, you get some experience and you qualify yourself according to the United States standards. You may find yourself doing jobs that are considered menial, um, you know, jobs that you're probably not accustomed to. Jobs such as, you know, maybe to um, dog sit or, or sit pets, clean up the remains of, of the pets, companionship to people who are elderly, doing security jobs or other jobs that may be physically taxing where you're doing a lot of climbing, jobs that a, a typical American citizen probably would not want to do. So very often this is what happens. The, the migrant, even if they are very highly qualified or highly educated, when they move to the United States, there is a learning curve and a period of time where they find themselves doing jobs that they really did not bargain for or did not want to do or were not doing in their countries of origin. Okay, so here's the thing though. The first, I would say the first most important consideration when you're deciding to relocate is to have a very strong why. Why are you moving overseas? In some cases, people move because of family connections. So maybe your spouse is living there. Okay, so your spouse is living there and perhaps has settled and has a good job and therefore it's for you it may be a little different. You have an adjustment period where you probably can go to school, get yourself educated and you, you have someone else who will support you for during that initial period as you make the transition, as you do the adjustment and as you settle overseas. However, each person has to look at their individual situations. We have to consider or the age. How old is this person? How old are you as you migrate? Are you a minor? Are you under 21? Are you of over 15, over 16? Are you moving to be with parents? And sometimes there are people, you're moving to live with someone that you may not have seen for 25 years, 15 years. So the last time the person saw you, you were a sweet or they were a sweet nine or 10 year old person. But since that time, 15, 20 years pass and they have gone through quite a bit of life challenges. Uh, situations have hardened them a bit and they're not really the same person that you left back home or the person who left home when you were much younger. So that's something to consider. So a lot of people find that when they move, there are some challenges and obstacles and difficulties and problems that they face. And then they start thinking, oh my goodness, I think I made a big mis mistake to relocate. But I believe it's not necessarily a mistake. What has to happen is that we have to consider our why. Why did we move in the first place? And I would dare say that you did some preparation, you thought carefully about moving before you did, and therefore having a good why for moving should be the motivating factor that says, well, you know, I'm facing some challenges, but in spite of those challenges, I'm going to persevere and I'm going to keep going until I get what it is that I came for. Okay. All right, so that's the first consideration. We have to have a very strong why, and that strong why needs to understand that we are, in terms of um, or the labor force, we are competing with people who are in the system ahead of us, and it, it will take time, effort, training, education, going back to school, certification, before we can get to that stage. Okay, the second uh, most important factor or criteria, I believe that every new immigrant or whether you're new or you've been there before or you've been there for a number of years is that there has to be a mental toughness. We have to have a very strong mind to be able to relocate and adjust 
and readjust. So when the storms come and the challenges come and we face, uh, you know, uh, uh, prejudice or various things that happen, we have to have the mindset that says, you know, I know who I am and I am going to push through and persevere regardless of what is happening outside. Okay. All right. And the third thing I believe is having uh, the need for community, the need for community. And I believe I can't emphasize that enough. When we relocate, we, we, we need um, to avoid that temptation to stay alone, to isolate ourselves. We were not born to be islands. We were not born to be islands, you know, and um, so we need a community. When I moved to the United States, I started out living in Connecticut. And to be honest with you, you know, it was very, very difficult, very challenging. First of all, I was dealing with a disappointment where I had sent, sold everything I had, which is a no, no, never sell your homes and your cars and your assets before going and checking out the place. Anyway, I sold. I had family there and I felt I'll be fine. So I sold everything, sent by all the money, converted it to US dollars, sent it overseas to a contractor to refurbish a space. And when I got there, oh my goodness, <laughs> it was something else. I kid you not. The, tra the, the um, contractor disappeared. I never saw him again. And so did my money and i could not believe i didn't i thought oh my goodness if i were coming here alone i think i would know what to do but my children were still pretty young they were in school how am i going to take care of them when this guy has gone with all my money and i don't have the, the space that i thought was being built for me and the children so it was very 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 hard dealing with that having to do two jobs having to start with a job that was not my ideal job. But you know what, within after about seven years, which is I think the typical or minimum time it normally takes anyway for you to get to the point you want to get to, I would say a minimum of five or so years. And again, it depends on whether you get busy going to school, doing your certification, you know, getting the experience you need. And for some people, it's as much as 10 years. Some people, it takes 15, 20 years. For them to get to the point that they want to get to but the strength of your mind is going to be what will make a big 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 difference okay but then yes i'm saying community so what happened was i pretty much isolated myself from everything the the church community and and you know other areas for a couple of years and when i did that i got to the point where i felt that I think I was doing much better back home. I had my friends there. I had the church community. I had the the, the community in the, the where I lived, and I. But now I am in a new country and I feel isolated. So what I would say is uh, that we need a good community. All of us, when you migrate, don't give in to the temptation to isolate yourself because that's where you're going to run into difficulties. A lot of people uh, become depressed and other things happen to them because they do not have these three things. They forget their whys, why they're there. They've given into a, a weakness in their mind. They allow their mind to go to places that it should not go. They, their minds become weak and then they stay, they isolate themselves and stay away from the community that they should have. Now, I just want to throw something out there if just in case you are in this situation where you're feeling discouraged, you're feeling down, you feel that, okay, you did migrate, uh, you have some disappointments, it's not the way you thought it would be. This is what I want to say to you and it is this and I really believe this strongly and that is that as an immigrant, you are in a position to do better than many people who have never migrated. Yes, I said it. You are in a position to do better than a lot of people who did not migrate. Why do I say that? First of all, as an immigrant, you get, you have had exposure to more than one world, okay? You have become exposed to various cultures and I believe that that is a good opportunity. So you 
you have the wisdom, the knowledge, experience of living in, a, in your own country of birth and now you've gone to a foreign land and you have acquired some additional experience. In some cases, what that experience means is that now you are better able to establish a business and that is why many immigrants start businesses and do very well with it. Children of immigrants or immigrants themselves move overseas and are able to start businesses that people who were born in the foreign country could not do. And why is that? That is because they have been exposed to more than one world and there is a lot of value from that experience. Um, the other thing about why I say that uh, as an immigrant, you have a good stead or a good chance is because as an immigrant, you have had experience at various levels. You know what it means to have comfort and to live in comfort from your homeland. And you know what it is to have hard times. You know how to overcome hardships, not both in your homeland as well as the foreign land. And that is a great opportunity. So I would say an immigrant is among the strongest of persons that exist in the world. An immigrant is among the strongest of persons that exist in the world. They're the ones who are willing to take risks. They're the ones who are willing to push themselves. They may not have ever experienced working in the snow before. They're probably from a tropical climate where everything is warm sunshine all year, year long, warm and dandy, nice leisure and so on. And then they move overseas, handle the snow, wear the clothing and still excel and they still make it. So I would say an immigrant is among the strongest people in the world. Okay, so that's it. You stay strong, you will make it. And just in case you're, you're listening to me, you're tuned in here and you're feeling down, feeling distressed, feeling discouraged as an immigrant, I just want to encourage you to keep on pushing along, stay strong. This is a new year. This is a new decade. We shall make it. You shall make it. Just try to remember your why, why you migrated in the first place. Two, keep that mind strong. Feed it with good thoughts, with positive thoughts, positive vibes. And three, find yourself in the right community. Find yourself with people who are positive, whether it be a spiritual institution or people who, who will coach you so that you can move to your next level. Find yourself a mentor. I myself have several mentors and I also mentor people. So you stay strong and I believe this is the year for you. This is the year for all of us, 2020. Welcome, happy new year and thank you so much for tuning in. See you soon.